Since the beginning, we've dared to do what others have deemed impossible. When we go to space, regardless of creed or color, we all become one. It's truly amazing that countless people from countless places will come together for the pursuit of something greater than themselves and not for the benefit of one, but for the benefit of all. But how can we leave our earthly cradle and venture forth? Let's take a look at an equation that is rocket science in a supersonic nutshell, Salkowski's formula. How does our rocket accelerate upwards? By Newton's second law, the sum of all forces is mass times acceleration. But what is a force? A force is simply an interaction, a push or pull between bodies. And by Newton's third law, we know that every force will have an equal but opposite reaction force. So as a propellant is ejected and exerts a force downward, the rocket will experience an equal but opposite force called thrust pushing it up. And if thrust is enough to overcome gravity, then it will accelerate upwards. As an object gains speed, it will increase its momentum, which is motion quantified as the product of mass and velocity. In this scenario, the total momentum of the cannon system is zero because it is at rest. Newton's third law shows that because every force has an equal but opposite reaction force, the total amount of momentum of a system will not change so long as there is no net unbalanced force. Thus, even though this man is shot upwards, the net momentum of the system is still zero because the explosion was inside the cannon. Let's consider our rocket relative to an outside observer. After some time, the rocket is burned fuel, ejecting some mass delta m at a particular exhaust velocity ve relative to the rocket. The mass inside the rocket has decreased while the rocket's velocity has increased. Since momentum is conserved relative to the observer, we can write the fundamental equation for how our rocket works, Salkowski's formula. This equation yields delta v, or change in velocity given a set speed VE of the exhaust particles and a starting mass of the rocket M0 and an ending mass of the rocket M1 without fuel. Delta V will dictate where our rocket can travel to based on the amount of fuel we have and the efficiency of our engines. It's a bit like chess where delta V is how many squares you can move your piece. It's a testament to our abilities that we can express the very key to reaching the cosmos in one equation. However, that equation confines us to play by a very limited set of rules. A particular amount of fuel will get you only this far, and if you want to go somewhere, you'll need a set percentage of your mass to be fuel, often as high as 90%. So the challenge is up to you to break through this tyranny, to create better fuel, to engineer better rockets, or to do away with the rocket for something only you could have dreamed of. Remember that this journey of a thousand miles begins with one small step for you, but promises one giant leap into our future.